was listening to some of your music. Christian yeah. sent me some clips. And we have a lot in common in okay. that I feel like we're we're positioned similarly yeah. when it comes to certain things. So I was like, oh, this is somebody hey, who either, like gets we, it. Whether we are or we not. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, good. yeah. We should have a conversation. But, it's all love. But I man. like to hear I love the dialogue. Yeah, you know? the, the consciousness um in your music. Because I feel like right now hip hop is changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's lacking a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. I would like to kind of get your current like opinion on the state of hip hop right now. Oh, uh, I mean, I think that, uh, well, I think the current state of hip hop is in a pretty good place. It's just that I feel like there is so much out there. So when you kind of see what's in the mainstream, I feel like people judge hip hop on that. But that's not really hip hop. I mean, mm -hmm. hip hop is the culture. Yeah, we know that this is where this is the birthplace of it. Um, but when you look at commercial rap, you know, it seems it can be a, it's a little off balance you know all you see is like certain images you mm -hmm. know what i mean whether it's over sexualization whether it's drug use violence that's always kind of been there in hip hop but now it's just like that's the only thing we see on mm -hmm. the mainstream or the commercialized side and because america has a fascination with that you know what i'm saying <laughs> whether yeah. you know what i'm saying it's not just hip hop culture but we promote and we produce and people consume and just eat that shit up mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. um but uh so i don't think that's a hip-hop problem i think that's an american society problem oh for sure and hip-hop is just the latest you know platform that's you know they say like oh we can make money talking about this and well, casualty, of it. It. Yeah, yeah. The casualty of it yeah you know yeah what I mean? but that's not hip-hop you know hip-hop is you know the culture sure. of you know what i'm saying mc and break dance and graffiti you know what i'm saying dj those are the elements of hip hop um, and the culture that was birthed out of this area, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Out of the Bronx, you know, from the disparity of the lack of art in school or music. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. DJ Cool Hurt was like, oh, okay, we, we ain't got no instruments to play. We're going to make music out of these records, you know? Yeah. So, that's the, beauty of, that's the beauty of hip hop, the creativity, the bringing people together out of positivity. Let's, let's dance battle, let's graffiti battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when it starts getting commercialized, now your incentive isn't just to do mute is just isn't it just to do art or to have fun or to you know express your culture it becomes like yo if that's what they doing all right well i'm gonna do this too because it make money and we all can be victims to those little sacrifices but sometimes all those little sacrifices become a big one sure and i feel like we're kind of seeing that now but to, that being said there's a lot of great dope hip-hop because now with the internet mm -hmm. and with um social media and with youtube you can find it there. You just got to look for it. But it's just so saturated as well. So yeah. it's the, you know, the give and take with it. Do you feel like because hip hop is kind of in this commercial state that sometimes or not even sometimes it's become a capitalization off of cultural trauma? Well, um, that's a good. I like when people ask specific questions. <laughs> you know, that, that was dope. Um, is, is it capitalizing off specific trauma? Mm hmm. Yeah, it is. It is, you know, um, as is that's one of many things it's doing. But um, when you diagnose the problem specifically, like because hip hop is black culture, you know what I mean? Black and, you know, black culture and, and as well as Latino. And then that's what it was birthed from. Um, but it's kind of a double edged sword to me. So let me pose. Let me put it to you like this. I always connect hip hop with Africa, directly to African traditions. Whether it's griots, whether it's um, the West African Gullah people of the Georgia Sea Islands, mm -hmm. the Caribbean people, you know, DJ Cool Herc, DJ Cool Herc is Caribbean, you know what I mean, right? He So, well, what are those people, I believe that there's a direct line from hip hop, the transatlantic slave trade, to Africa sure so it's it's a culture that was birthed out of the necessity of people being you know um in captivity mm -hmm. victims of imperialism or whatever you want to call it it's a beautiful thing that we were able to create it out of that but it's still a reflection of that mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying sometimes it's the good side sometimes it's the bad side but the problem with it is is when you have other people commercializing and benefiting off the narrative it's kind of like Django Unchained, mm -hmm. which I thought was a great entertaining movie, but it's still someone else telling 
black folks story or controlling the narrative so that's when it gets kind of like yo is this enjoyable or are these is this a character you know what i mean exploiting it sure you know what i mean i think that's kind of the problem and i think that hip hop is now hip hop is the number one or has become the number one form of music entertainment you know at one point in time it wasn't like that right 10 20 25 years now ago. it's mainstream now it's completely mainstream mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know what i mean so now you get all these different versions all these kind of like weird mixed hybrid versions of of it's not really hip hop to me it's rap you know what i mean because hip hop i was having a conversation with one of my mentors ogs and he was like yo because i would always be like yo it's all a part of hip hop it's all a part of hip hop but he was just like yo if you really break it down from the 80s like Hip hop had specific elements, and if it didn't have those elements, that was not considered hip hop. Mm. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we kind of got lenient with that, right? You know what I mean? Like, for instance, like having a D, like you had to have a DJ mm-hmm. in hip hop. That's what it was. If it wasn't that, then it wasn't it wasn't hip hop because the DJ was first. Yeah, but then it became like okay, we just gonna rap over a dat. We just gonna rap over our vocals. You know what I mean? It's rap music, which comes from hip hop. But if you ain't got the DJ there with you, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, well, what you doing? Then people rap over bands and stuff, which is dope. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not shunning people who rap over bands because I think it's dope. But that's a little bit outside of the realm of hip hop because hip hop was the the art, the the MC and the DJ mm-hmm. and the dancers and mm-hmm. the graffiti. So I don't know. Do you think some of like what's been going on culturally has trickled over into other areas like you gotta be more specific politics, like the, the cultural trauma that we were talking about early on, like that's uh-huh. trickled over and, and it's been monetized, but do you feel like it's also been leveraged in politics in a way? Because I was looking at one of your reels and you uh-huh. mentioned a term called poverty pimping and, oh, and yeah. I <laughs> thought that was very yeah. interesting. So you're asking me, yeah, um, well, what I meant in that term, um, I was specifically making a comparison between Democrats and Republicans, Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times, um, because I worked in the nonprofit sector for a long time while I was like in college and stuff like that, and um, I was hands-on working with um, youth, but I also had to deal with the politics of... um, of you know you have donations from city councilmen and you know and all you know like uh senators and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff you know you're getting money uh maybe from the county or these type of things and there's a lot of red tape and a lot of times with black folks i feel like we've been thinking that okay this specific these specific people have our interests at hand but a lot of times is a lot of this money gets funded but it's not actually going to the people who need it the most. Like I would be frustrated with that. And it's not these grassroots organizations. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're not the problem. It's the, the system around it, how, who's getting the money and who's, and how it's being being utilized. And then people will virtue signal with it. And I feel like a lot of times the Democrats are the ones that are, waving their pom-poms about it. Whereas like, and I'm not advocating for it. Like a lot of people take what I say and it's like, oh, you advocating for Trump? No, I'm not advocating Mm -hmm. for Trump. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that these people pretend like they got your back, but these people, you know they don't got your back. Right. Which one is more deadly? It's like what Malcolm X said. He's like, these liberals are saying like this, they'll smile on your face and stab you in the back. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I just feel like, um, particularly with black people, I feel like it's racist to tell black people they can only think one way. Oh, for sure. That's racist. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I feel like a lot of times the most vocal people with that be, you know, be the um, the liberals. And I, I've always considered myself liberal. I'm mm-hmm. not some person that'd be like, oh, no, you got to eat apple pie and only, yeah. you know, have sex with the with the lights off. You know what I mean? I'm You're not, liberal in thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm but I don't make up my mind before I hear a decision. Sure. I think one of the things that we don't do well as a culture when it comes to politics in general, like we don't really go research folks and where they stand on issues. And it's like we get sold this false bill of goods based on whatever's being created. Mm -hmm. in the mainstream right we're told x y and z and we don't do a good job of like going to look up people for ourselves and making a definitive decision based on what people really stand for so that's where we get caught up and then our vote kind of gets used not only do people not even pay attention to no that i agree with you 100 percent. but i feel like it it goes even beyond 
po- uh, politicians mm-hmm. or figures. It can just be information. Sure. Mm-hmm. People would just repost something and be like, yo, this. And I'm like, before I look at stuff, I like to understand it before I just make a post about something. Mm-hmm. Just because everybody else is saying this. I'm be like, well, I don't know about that. Let me look and see what that is. Oh, I don't agree with that. So I don't post it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to post something just because everybody, or I'm not going to post it because social media says this is the time to do it. I like to think about it, see what it is, mm-hmm. understand it mm-hmm. before I make a post just saying something. Sure. You know? Yeah. And I feel like people don't really do that no more. They just post what's going on. They say every, I mean, I've seen people specifically post things and it's a flat out lie. Yeah. You know what I mean? People that I know. Mm-hmm. And I would be like, yo, bro, this is a lie. Did you research this? Did you so, research this? Yeah. Oh, no, I just posted it. Do they take it down? Or if they take it down, they don't apologize mm-hmm. for, the, for the lie that they posted. They just posted it. And then when they take it down, they just take it down. And a lot of podcasts be doing that. Mm-hmm. And it's not just political stuff. It's within, like, I try to speak on, a lot of people ask me questions about, because I'm I'm half, I'm, I'm black, my mother's black, my father's Iranian. Mm-hmm. But I grew up in America. Mm-hmm. I grew up in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Culturally, I'm black because that's what I grew up sure. in. Sure. You know? But as I got older, I started to under th- understand things, you know, um, where my father is from and understand, you know, the world from a global perspective. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I live here in America. So I'm boots on the ground in America. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I deal with these things, whether it's inequality, whether it's social justice, whatever those things are, I have a hands-on experience and I can see it face-to-face and touch it. I've dealt with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I can speak on it from a first-person point of view sure, with a deeper understanding than certain other things. So I don't have knowledge of that. So when I speak on that, people sometimes want me to advocate, and not only for that, but for other things that I'm just like, yo, I don't have the same information that I have that I have about this. Mm-hmm. I can go in depth about this because I have a, because I'm living it. I see the effects of it. So I speak on it and I'm giving you the information that I've gathered. Mm-hmm. Everything else to a certain point is just from books. It's from other people's understanding. It's from news. Out, and I have to decipher it differently. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. when it comes to Richmond, I'm on the ground in Richmond. I went and delivered food and picked people up and took grandmas to the doctor. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Those type of things. And and my family has went through those things. So mm-hmm. I have a different understanding, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's I just I just like to have information about stuff before I just get to <laughs> that's important. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> information is key, yeah. right? Yeah. So how did you move from being in the non for profit sector into music? Well, I always um I always well I was doing music before. Well, I guess maybe around the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't really start like recording music till I was like in college, and then at that around that same time I started working um because I think at that point. When I was in college, I was like, well, what am I going to do as a career? I was probably going to be a teacher. You know what I mean? Um, and um, But then uh, I started working like in junior high school, um, in a junior high school. And uh, and then I started working for the nonprofit organization, which is a beautiful organization. It's called the um, Youth Service Bureau. Mm-hmm. And I worked specifically in a program called the Kinship Program, which was started by my best friend's grandmother, who was taking care of her grandchildren. Mm. So she started literally this grassroots organization in Richmond that was helping out grandparents and other parents, great aunties, taking care of their grand, you know, basically raising their, their grand, you know, their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And it was grassroots. And we was there in the beginning and now it's grown and it's, you know, it's, it's still a wonderful organization. I haven't been there in a while because music kind of took my, my time. Sure. But, um, that's my roots, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, is mm-hmm. in Richmond. And, um, but at the same time, I had a sister when I was a kid that was a rapper, you know, and she was an MC and she was touring across in Europe. And I, I didn't really realize the, um, the effect that it was having on me. Mm-hmm. But, um, watching her when I was like 11, 12 years old, writing raps, you know what I mean, going to the studio. She was first, she was like a dancer. She mm-hmm. was, um, doing shows with, with digi- you know, digital underground sure, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, uh, and then she ended up touring, doing like talent shows with like Black Alicious and dancing at shows with like, where E40, you know, like those type of mm-hmm, things. Mm-hmm. And we were, you know, my mom would gather us all. And we would go, you know what I mean? See mm-hmm. that stuff. So I guess that's where those two worlds kind of collide. And then um, when I got about in college, 
or right after I graduated high school, I just fell in love with actually like trying to learn how to rap. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it kind of came together like that. And then by the time I graduated college, I was like, hey, we getting kind of good at this. Let me try to do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, the nonprofit organization was a job that I was able to do in college. And then after I was done with college, I didn't I never went full time because then I was pursuing music. So it allowed me to kind of like, OK, I can work with the kids sure. after school, but then I can still go out on the weekends yeah, and perform yeah. and do that type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you mentioned um, pursuing being a teacher initially. Right. Do you feel like you've kind of carried that over away in your music? I guess. I mean, it's just kind of un. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't consider myself. I'm not care as one the teacher. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it, I guess. It but has you're a, talking about something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't want to listen to music if it's not really talking about. It. That's not the type of music that I love. Right. I like music that makes me feel some way or makes mm -hmm. me think a certain way, or something. You know what I mean? So that's the. I want to say probably. Early on, it might have been the first tape that I ever bought was probably Boogie Down Productions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you must learn and, um, you know what I'm saying, love's going to get you. Um, my brother was heavy into East Coast rap. Okay. Big Daddy Kane, mm -hmm. BDP, um, KRS-One, um, uh, EPMD. My sister was... Easy E, <laughs> you okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was into Easy E, that type of music. So that was like, ooh, I was like, this hard, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then, but then I, the lyrical stuff, I was listening to with my brother. So those were kind of like how I developed my, um, I guess, my taste in hip hop. So who do you listen to? Who are your favorites? All time or right now or? Just in general. In general, well, Nas is what initially made me want to rap. Hmm. You know how I mean? so? I just was, it was just so poetic. Mm. You know what I mean? When I heard Illmatic, you know, um, as a kid, I was like, this is, that was the first time I just wanted to freestyle because I was just like, yo, rap is a monkey flipping with the funky rhythm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. Nas, I was just like, I never heard, because before that, people were, you know, you had LL, like I said, Karis One, Big Daddy Kane. Mm -hmm. They were lyrical, but it wasn't like poetic. I mean, Rakim. Rakim was like the beginning. I was just like, oh, I really like this. And then Nas was kind of like my mm -hmm. my thing that I discovered. And I remember sure. my sister came back from a showcase. It was the um, Gavin Showcase mm -hmm. in San Francisco where they used to have, you know, all artists from, you know, would come. And my sister was in one of the showcases. She was like, yo, everybody was talking about this dude Nas. You know what I mean? This mm -hmm. dude Nas. And I never heard of that. You know what I mean? But I remember when it came out. And I heard it, it just like it, made it sounded me, different. It just made me fall in love with yeah, hip hop. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then later on, I just love Jay Z. That's probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then nowadays, I really enjoy um, Kendrick. I enjoy um, J. Cole. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff with a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I listen to some of the ratchet stuff from time to time, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anything but, new that's out that you feel like is really good right now? Like very new? Mm -hmm. Um. I like J.I.D. Okay. You know I mean, you know, I mean, he's pretty established now, though. Corday, um, La Russell from the Bay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Simba, those are the homies from the Bay. Pilo from the Bay. Um, I am Sue from the Bay. Um, those are my guys that I really love their music. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's kind of what I would I be. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So you have your own platform too, Lock Lift, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. so let's talk about that. The Lock Lift. Yeah. So the Lock Lift is a social media series that I started. Um, I started it way back, I want to say, I think I re first recorded it in 2015. Oh, wow. Released it in 2016. Mm -hmm. And it started off, so it's called Lock Lift because it's like I'm driving yeah, a lift. Yeah, yeah. But it started off actually as me, um, I wanted to share my music with my fans mm. and I wanted to document it. And at that time, I think I had saw like some other rappers like J. Cole or Logic or somebody, they were going around to fans and they were having one-on-one -on -one listening sessions, either like at a studio mm -hmm. or I think J. Cole or Logic was going around in a tour bus and bringing people on their tour bus. And I was like, well, how can I market my music in a more create in a way that's creative, but you know, different than what they're yeah. doing. And I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to pick people up and play it for them in the car. Right. And I call it the lock lift. I did that, but I end up rapping along, you know, they listen to the, but I'm rapping along. And I was like, you know what? The next time I do this, and when I, and I, and I posted those clips, and a lot of people hit me up like, yo, that's a genius idea. This is a it genius. Is. This is really innovative. And I just was like, and this was like, you know, Instagram was, it was popping, but it wasn't as. What it is you now. Know, it, Reels wasn't even yeah, a thing yeah. yet. So I was like, all right, you know what? That was a good response. The next album or the next songs that I do, 
I'm going to actually rap them live in the car. So I did that. I want to say that was probably like 2018. Mm -hmm. I did that. And the response was so great. Um, I mean, it was okay on YouTube, but it was real. I mean, it was okay on like Instagram and social media, but it was really good on YouTube when I saw people talking about it. And then every time I would like, I would wait six months and I would repost it, mm -hmm. and the numbers would just go up more and more. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna really lean into this. Yeah. The next time I do it. So with my next album that I've that I've been releasing songs for now. Um, I said, I'm going to try to record as many songs as possible mm -hmm. and do it in this lock lift mm -hmm, format mm -hmm. because every time I post it on social media, the numbers go crazy. It's going up and up more than a, a music video would do, mm -hmm. you know? So I changed the look of it. I made it where, um, where I edited it so it would fit for reels mm -hmm. and for TikTok mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And um, I'm not some like social media guru or, you know what I mean, where I just like, I know everything is, you know, how to do it. But I just studied it and I was just like, all right, as an independent artist, businessman, mm -hmm. building my brand, how can I market this in the best way? I said, I'm going to take all these songs and I'm going to do them in this lock lift format because whenever I post them the old way, it doesn't even look as good. But if I shoot it and up the quality, right. up the recording, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. up the performance and the lyricism and the music and everything, I think it's got a good chance of doing some big numbers. I did it and it just like, it just took off. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, not right away. I posted. I was like, oh, okay, it's doing cool. It took off on TikTok. It got like a million, one video. And I said, okay. And every so often, I would I consistently post clips, and it would just start going viral. I mean, mm -hmm. I had like five or six clips just go viral. Three million, four million, three million. That's crazy. Maybe, maybe it's probably like over, you know, 15 million at this point um, from like between like three, four or five clips, mm -hmm. you know, and it just raised my visibility. Then I started hit getting celebrities reach out to me. Um, I start including other artists in the lock lift to rap with me. Mm -hmm. So, um, people I had songs with like exhibit, sure. um, my homie Murs, um, uh, La Russell, um, and other people have reached out to me, Dame Lillard, you know what I mean? The who player, he's a rapper. He's from the Bay. He's like, yo, lock, this is ill. Mm -hmm. Let to have you in a lock lift. Let's get it. You know yeah. what I mean? Other rappers, um, yeah, so I'm just gonna try to continue to have it, you know, grow and grow. It's just, it's, it's uh, people seem to really take to it. You were ahead of your time. I was right. That was 2016. <laughs> I didn't even know. Nobody it. was even really thinking like that Nobody or utilizing thinking. social media in that way. Yeah. So, so good for you. Thank you. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. So, where'd you decide to get your name from? Like, where did that? What was the inspiration behind that? You know, I wish I had some. Um, deep mm -hmm. thought-provoking philosophical reason <laughs> but um i used to be when i first started rapping it was me my two homies and our other homie who was uh making beats mm -hmm. and uh we would just go over his house and rap um in san francisco we were on the weekends we just go over there and just come up with our raps and um i didn't know how to rap i was just learning you know what i mean um but the first rap that we recorded like like actual like on a on an adap machine um, it was the first rap that was kind of good. It was like, okay, this is good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You could be on this song now, Locke. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, I just said a line where, like, I'm a lyrical locksmith. You know what I'm saying? And they was like, yo, that's hot. That's your name. They just start calling me locksmith. I was like, nah, that's stupid. Don't call me that. And then um, there was a source battle. Mm -hmm. The source had came out to the bay. And um, they was like, what's your name? I was like, uh, locksmith. They was like, yo, that's hot. You know what I mean? It was like said, I was just like, all right. And so they co-signed it. You were like, it's official. It's yeah. Stamp. You know what I mean? That's my name. But yeah. that's the only rap moniker that I've but used. But that's a pretty impressive story. Yeah, I mean, I was I mean, it was not I didn't think of it like, yo, I'm unlocking the minds to right. the people. Like it, <laughs> I it wasn't, know what you meant. It yeah. wasn't that. It was just, you know what I mean? But a co-sign from the source is like, that yeah. was a good sign. Yeah, I don't know who that was that was hosting it, but he's like, yo, your name locks me. He's like, yo, that's hot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. So how have you been able to keep yourself encouraged as an indie artist? Because, you know, I, I know a lot of independent artists yeah. that are out here. And, you know, it gets discouraging at times, especially when you're trying to get your music out there. It just seems like it's a, it. it's a grind. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you've been able to be creative about it. So what advice would you give to people who, who are maybe feeling a little discouraged about where they're at in their music journey? Well, I can only give you my situation. You know what I'm saying? I don't have an, uh, the answer or the formula to, you know what I mean? First, it, to me, it starts with, I just, I, I love making music. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I didn't I didn't get into music to come up. It wasn't a come up. It was not a hustle. It wasn't something I was like, oh, um, 
I'm trying to, you know, I want to make a million off of this. It was just like, yo, I love this. I want to get good. I want people to understand. You know, first I wanted to get good. I wanted to be dope. And then I wanted to be able to convey a message. Once I got, felt like I was good enough, then I was like, okay, now that I feel like I'm decent and I'm good, how can I say something? You know what I mean? And that's still what I do. I mean, everything that I've had success from pretty much in music has always been me saying something. Mm. You know what I mean? So I feel like if you start with that, it'll always give you purpose. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just going after something. For fame or yeah. for other things. And listen, people want what they want, why yeah, they want fine. it. But I, I agree with you in that. Like when you f- use it as your purpose and like it's part of your call, it's just a different experience, right? Because I believe that our gifts and callings are really to help other people, right? Yeah. Like we get blessed with them so that we can sow into other people. So I, I love to hear that authentic approach and you're not trying to just be lit yeah you know i mean look of course i want my music to be heard by as many people as possible sure. you want that but i try to remind myself okay what are you doing this for what's your purpose so i kind of start with that and i i kind of love i mean as difficult it is it as it is i love the grind i love the anxiety of different things you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like you know, like I said, I was just on another platform, up, you know, me with, with my brother from the Bay Sway. Mm-hmm. I love that, yo, you gonna spit like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, 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 um, that anxiety of like, yo, I gotta come out here. Like, that's one of the things I like about New York, you mm-hmm. know, is coming out here. Um, because people, at the end of the day, they like all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you could spit, they got that's love. That's all we care about. They, they got love. For you. <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? And if you could do that, yeah. they got love for you. And I like that grind. I like that bumping shoulders and coming mm-hmm. out here and, and, you know, doing that. I just think it's dope. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so that's that's where my that's where my drive comes from. You know what I'm saying? The love of doing it. Yeah. I mean? And and not to swagger Jack from Sway. Shout out to Sway. But yeah. can you spit for us today? I can spit a little something yeah, for you. Yeah, why not? We can give you like a little acapella? It's a little something. Do it right now? Yeah. We good? I'm a stand on my position. I've always been a man and never ran for my position. I've always took a stand to expand on contradictions, how you cancel Kyrie but not your Amazon subscription. I'm from the Bay, so it's relevant. If we condemn him for the link, go after Bezos for selling it. I do not agree with his rhetoric, but we should scrutinize both guys, not just the side with melanin. Now we about to take another elegant. It's costly when your gene pool is out of pocket. They relish in every misstep we take abrupt. So you can understand it takes less than four quarters to break a buck. LeVar Burton, we all searching for proof. Get caught with a black thought and they strangle you by your roots. They dangle this by a noose. If you knew better than you'd measure misinformation from truth. Now with the news feathers, they have to bait you in order to aggravate you. Continue to sell trauma and tell you they advocate you. There's only two ways we get to re-success. Either promote death or let them put you in a dress. We kill each other because we focused on the bands, buck shots and take off and fans posted on the gram. Self-inflicted violence, desensitized from homicide. Drama brings viewers and viewers create dollar signs. You know how much this country loves narcissists. We deify stars and pray at the feet of pharmacists. Prescription drugs, pop music is well kept. We medicate our kids. These rappers become the sale reps. And the active ingredients is obedience. Instead of microphones and the styrofoam, there's lenience. We hypersexualize the naive, get them high and high the intent and the BPM is the medium. We all should be accountable for slander Keep the same tone for those with a Jones to gerrymander Some of us scared to answer Ignorance is paradise Got a yellow terp tapeworm and these bullets are parasites Stuck in a careless fight Looking elsewhere brings Anorexic pipe dreams when no health care means How many heads were turning when Mississippi was burning And Brett Favre got a bag That's a welfare queen I repel those schemes that plans out you were given the upper hand that you handle in handouts. Too late, but the plan's out. When you black, it's a risk. It'd be more than a play sheet that they slap on your wrist. My reaction is this. Don't expect me to play a steal when you constantly move the goal and unlevel the playing field. You point the finger deflecting your impotence with your social media mob that's flooded with hypocrites. Rappers get convicted from lyrics just like a cheat code just to be paid in full. Now you staring at a Rico. Look up underneath those who created the climate. If you're not the one that's selling this sickness, then you're a client. You know how much this country loves narcissists. We deify stars and pray at the feet of pharmacists. Prescription drugs, pop music, we love it. Ingest in our bloodstream and sell it back to the public. Okay. There it is. Yeah. (laughs) You're nice. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I felt that. So, I mean, where do you think all that inspiration and creativity comes from? 
You mean from period or mm-hmm. from that particular song? Just in general. In general? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it was my love of hip hop. Mm-hmm. I mean, the foundation. You know what I'm saying? My brother, my sister, my love for the, you know what I mean? The love for my culture, the love for my neighborhood, mm-hmm. the love for my, uh, you know what I'm saying? The my, my surroundings and wanting to, um at the end of the day, want to see folks who are suffering in a better place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I can God give a little bit of image. It's just my, you know, and at the end of the day, this is just my, I pose a lot of questions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is just my way of, I feel like as long as we thinking, we're doing something right. For sure, for sure. So what are you working on right now? Like, what's your your latest project? Yeah, my new album, um, my new album will be released very shortly. Um, I'm finalizing everything. Um, It's called No Atheists in Foxholes. Mm. That's the name of the title. That's the title of the the album. Um, I've been releasing singles for it, and then it'll all culminate um, when I drop this album. I don't want to box myself into a timeline, but it'll be... You know, within the next few weeks, maybe, you know, February, maybe maybe as late as early March. OK, what inspired that title? Because that's very interesting. Because I just feel like it's tough times, man. Everybody's like. Like we said, well, we just came out of, you know, this pandemic, economics, war, all these different things that people are going through. What's going on right here in the soil? Mm-hmm. It's a recession. For some people, it's a depression. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you said, independent artists. I don't whether you're independent artist, whether you work in an office building, where you a server, where you gas station, whatever. Stuff is tough right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? The price of eggs is high. Everything. And um, when times get tough, people start calling for some help from something greater than themselves. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know, sometimes we can be arrogant and we put a lot of stake in ourselves, but sometimes you got to get you get down on your knees or on the floor or in the, wherever you go you know what i mean in in the in the pulpit or whatever and you'd be like you need some guidance you know definitely so no atheists in foxholes right now i feel like a lot of us america is in a foxhole oh my god definitely yeah yeah i mean i i just i'm a big faith person yeah. you know i mean i believe in god and i can't imagine not believing in God, yeah, especially yeah. going through times well, like this. Well, everybody believes you know? in something. Yeah. Whether you, whatever is the only, whatever is the thing that dictates your life, mm-hmm. that's your God. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I also believe that we are creative beings. Like we came from. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. A huge, a creator of all creators, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so for me, I'm just like God. I just pray that people find that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's important. You can't be out here just doing life by yourself. That's how I look. Yeah, and I don't think that that's God's will for us. That's how I look at it. For yeah, sure. but I love the title of that. Thank you. And man. I'm looking forward to hearing some of that. Thank you. Thank Any you. of the tracks that you can talk about? Yeah, um, I have a song called America. I think mm-hmm. that's one of the ones you had uh, kind of referenced from mm-hmm. uh, one of. That's just kind of talking about how um, America has been kind of like, whether depending on how you look at it, but it's you know it's it's going through a lot of changes right now for the good or bad. It's very divided. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of things are very divisive, and it could be for the good. Sometimes these things got to come out. Um, to, in order to go forward, mm-hmm. um, I have a song called "Pray for Me," um, featuring a, a very, a very dope um, vocalist and lyricist. Her name is Jane Hancock, super dope. Um, and Rex Life Rise, they're both from the Bay Area, mm-hmm. very dope. Um, and it's just kind of like talking about the um, the personal struggles of just every day, whether you're an artist, whether you, you know what I mean, just a yeah. person. Like you're trying to like, I may not do everything right, but I'm doing my best pray for me you know yeah. what i mean and then hypocrites which is a snippet from the verse i just spit uh you know what i'm saying i think that's self-explanatory yeah. i'm holding the mirror up and i'm saying like hey I, we got some questions i'm posing the questions how do you want to answer them mm-hmm. and then um i got some hip-hop you know what i mean i got some tr- a track with ransom you know what i mean dope mc from jersey um and uh you know a lot more so yeah, yeah. good for you yeah thank you this is an important year for america yeah. maybe one of the most important years in history mm. right because mm. i think we it's either it's going to go on the right trajectory or it's going to go on the wrong trajectory right so i feel like we got to equip ourselves with the right information so that we can move accordingly yeah seek knowledge man mm-hmm. ask questions you know what i mean think yeah you know, we got to think because look at the end of the day we can't we can vote, you know what I mean? Obviously, you know, you can do that. You can um, participate, especially in local things like that in your community. But it starts with yourself. You know For what I'm sure. saying? It starts with you, your, first yourself, your family. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like that's where the change, excuse me. It uh, starts with personal accountability. Yeah, you know? it's foundational. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I thank you for being here today. No, nah, thanks for having me. Yeah, this of is course. dope conversation. Of course, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I checked out the um, 
your previous posts and stuff like that. So I was like, oh yeah, this this up my this up my alley. You oh, know? I appreciate that. Yeah, thank nah, you. And congrats on the great work that you're doing. Thank you. you know? Thank you. I, I mean, I'm similar to you. I'm trying to do this for the people, right? So we have platforms and opportunities to tell our story. So yeah. I really appreciate you coming up here and Absolutely, and joining man. us today. Where can everybody find you? Iamblock.com. That's a link to all my social media, Instagram, TikTok. Um, on Instagram, is D.A. Locksmith. TikTok, it's D.A. Locksmith, like D. Locksmith. Mm -hmm. Facebook, it's just Locksmith. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. you. No, nah, thank you. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate the love. You're listening to Power Move. I'm here with Locksmith. And until next time. Yeet!